Welcome to Modus Cafe. Join us for fun, lighthearted, and educational conversations around training, athletic longevity, and the human side of climbing. With your hosts, Mercedes Pollmeyer and Katya Dev. <laughs> We're recording now. We're so excited. I'm just <laughs> well, yes, welcome back. Uh, so we're doing breathing tactics today. I know that uh, Katya had presented this really nice kind of like short workshop about breathing tactics for climbing uh, in our Stronger Together coaching call a couple of weeks ago. And we wanted to go a little deeper into at least some of the tactics today. Um, so Katya is going to drop a bunch of breathing knowledge on us right now. How are you doing? Hi. Good. All right. Let's take a deep breath together. Okay, ready? <laughs> yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited. I get excited when we get to chat on the pod together. Yeah. And our topics are just things that light me up. Yeah. And as yeah, you said, with breathing, it's like, it's so funny that we have to talk about it. You yes. know? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's so funny. I just listened to this podcast. Actually, um, this host was interviewing James Nestor yesterday. He wrote the book Breathe, mm. um, <clears throat> which everybody who wants to dive d- deeper into breathing should definitely get. And yeah, that's one of the things he said. It's like, it's just so funny how something so natural <laughs> needs to be learned or talked about. But that's where we are. Yeah. And so here we are talking about breathing. So I think today, the things I want to cover, there's really just four different breathing techniques that I wanted to kind of dive into. I guess diving into is maybe a little bit too strong. I want to briefly cover them and just talk about the most important points and how they're applicable to our um, climbing specifically. And yeah, if anybody's interested in learning more, we talk more about it in our membership. And there's also going to be more resources in there as well. Hey, Mercedes, <clears throat> before I get started, is there anything you want to share? Because I know breathing has been part of your journey too. And I know you program that for athletes, both mm-hmm. in the membership and also for a one-on-one athlete. So yeah, yeah. Again, it's, it is funny how we have to pay special attention to it in our modern lifestyle. And for athletes, there's so many benefits. And I think you're going to be covering a lot of this, but you know, oh, just to start a session where you're focusing on breathing can actually just help optimize that session for your performance, for your mindset, and for recovery. Uh, So there's a lot of different reasons why we have um, each session and it starts with the breathing. Um, And then for my own journey, you know, like the breathing is such a huge component of my mindfulness practice every day. Uh, You know, I do meditate each day and It is a practice that focuses on breath and I really do love that part of my day. It can often be too short, um, but it does help me for the rest of the day to slow down and come back to the breath, especially at times of feeling really stressed or overwhelmed, like, okay, just like take a step back and just listen to your breathing. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the things that I love that you said is that it helps you slow down, which that's actually one of the things that James Nestor talked about yesterday too, which is that most of us, when we just naturally breathe in terms of when we think about our intuition and our busy lives, we actually all breathe way too frequently, way too often. And to explain a little bit of the science behind it first, when we inhale, you know, the goal is to inhale, you know, um, oxygen. And we want to exchange that for carbon dioxide because oxygen gets converted to carbon dioxide in our body. And then what we want to do is kind of exhale that carbon dioxide and then inhale that oxygen, right? That's the goal. That's why we breathe. But what can happen is when we breathe so quickly, one, um, quick breaths tend to be shallow. So we're actually inhaling less oxygen than we need Secondly, if they are so quick, we're not giving our body enough time for that gas exchange to happen. So switching out the oxygen for the carbon dioxide in our bodies. And so it's actually the first thing I wanted to talk about is kind of like a pranayama breath, kind of like a breath that just slows us down a little bit. 
and that activates our parasympathetic nervous system, which is really important for recovery, which is really important for mindfulness and just relaxing. And those are some of the breathing techniques that you prescribe for athletes to do even before they do their workout to kind of like bring them into that state of parasympathetic activation to actually boost or like um, give um, their recovery a head start. And a lot of our climbers, it helps them too to really get centered um, for their workout and their climbing. Like we often forget how um, much load it is on our cognitive function to climb. There's a lot of thinking we actually have to do. We have to be very precise and be very aware. Often climbing stretches are a comfort when we have to do committing moves. So the way we think um, is really important for climbing and our breath can really help with that. So the first breath that I wanted to talk about is the pranayama breath, which actually comes from yoga and it has three parts to it. It has the inhalation, the retention or the pausing, and then the exhalation. And often the exhalation is longer than the inhalation. And this is because when we exhale for a long time, that's what stimulates a parasympathetic nervous system. That is also what removes the CO2, the carbon dioxide on our body. And then it allows for better gas exchange when we do inhale the oxygen. And um, this can also be done without the pausing, but the pausing for the breath gives our body this extra time for the gas exchange to happen. Okay, so this is the first breath, first breath I want to talk about. It's really great for recovery. So it's really actually great to do before training, like we prescribe it before training. It's really great to do after training. Honestly, this breath would just be really great to do several times a day, independent of climbing, but um, we did want to talk about climbing specific breathing today. So those are the times where I would recommend it. Um, and I just want to give an example for that breath. It could be like a four, seven, eight. I think the numbers could be switched if people want to um, try different variations. But the idea would be you inhale for, uh, for a count of four, you hold for a count of seven, and you exhale for a count of eight. So I'm going to just do it to demonstrate. So even just doing once, this once, it's just so relaxing. And <clears throat> you can do it. So what we prescribe is you do it for a couple, even just a couple minutes, literally just doing it for two minutes. So because it's always difficult for people to add things to their busy schedule, even though breath work is so important, I really recommend start with literally just two minutes or one minute if you only have one minute. Um, I have talked to some athletes who tend to cut the breath work for um, trying to save time. But the thing is, if you get into a very present state, anything you're going to do during your day will be more effective. So that is time well spent because you're going to be saving time through efficiency down the road. Just one or two minutes, you can do it before you get up in the morning. You know, you set an alarm, you can set two alarms. The first one goes off, you do your breathing exercise. The second one goes off, you finish your breathing exercise. Something as simple as that. And I also want to emphasize the way we breathe and hopefully the people on video can see this. Like when we talk about doing big inhalations or inhalations in general, when we think about um, small, shallow inhalations, we're kind of like hunched forward a little bit like this. When we, That's how we normally breathe. It actually kind of goes with our posture, which is why I want to mention this. We breathe like this, kind of like, but when we do deep inhales, and inhaling through a diaphragm and opening up our chest, it really opens up our shoulders too, right? So I'm going to just demonstrate this. I'm going to take a deep inhale. You see how my shoulders open up, right? And when we think about climbing, I mean, this is a tricky question for you, Mercedes, but which one do you think is more beneficial for climbing? You know, open shoulders or closed shoulders? So being able to take these deep breaths, you know, even while climbing or before climbing really opens up our shoulders too, which opens up, up to in like a wide range of motion or movement above our head. I think okay. that's uh, especially for climbers because of our, maybe our jobs, like desk job, plus you're climbing a lot. Mm -hmm. We're already in this forward, like rounded position 
in our chest. And I think this is maybe one of the more important ones just for daily breathing and trying to bring some awareness to that is like, oh, you, you might actually counteract some of that postural uh, mm -hmm. issues. If you have issues with, with your posture, you know, it may actually help open you up. Yeah, and that's something you can um, focus on when you try to do the pranayama breath just to get that practice for opening up. And you can also do it even on a climb if you wanted to or before a climb. I mean, holding your breath during the climb is not always as beneficial. This would be easier to be done on ropes when you're warming up if you wanted to practice that. Not so great for bouldering, especially if it's harder. But I have some other suggestions of what people can do while climbing. This is more before and after climbing and just general stress management. And the second breath that I want to talk about is called a physiological sigh. That is something that the Huberman lab popular, popularized just recently. Although this, this breath, you know, it's been around. It's actually an ancient breathing technique. Um, they have just put some science behind it. And this is sometimes how it works. That's the beauty of science. Sometimes their downfall too is that sometimes they're just a little bit behind, but it's still great <laughs> that they're catching up. And it's really amazing to hear him talk about this because he has some physiological explanations for why this has worked for so long already. So this is called a physiological sigh. This is also really great for stress management. And it's a little bit more acute in terms of stress management. And it can also um, really provide this extra sense of awareness, this heightened, heightened sense of awareness and focus. And this is actually why the psychological sigh is not as beneficial to do right before bedtime because it's a bit arousing too in this like focus kind of way. But this is why that is something that I like to do just before I get into onto hard climbs, especially if I'm trying to red point something to kind of like get into the zone before I even get on. You can also do this if you climb on ropes, because when you climb on ropes, you kind of go through these, you know, fluctuations of trying hard, not trying hard. But just before a crux sequence, you can also use the psychological side to kind of like get into that zone of like, like trying really hard just before. Um, and it's actually also a way of reducing stress. So outside of climbing, even I would say climbing itself has some stress, you know, if you start out on a route that you want to send. But, you know, if you find yourself outside of climbing um, at home when your kids are yelling or you're next some other stressful situation, this is something you could practice. And the psychological side goes like this. And some of you might actually, a physiological sign, not psychological, I'm sorry. Some of you might actually realize how similar it is to sighing. And that's, you know, when we sigh, it's kind of like stress relieving a little bit. So the idea for this breath, this breath is you inhale twice in a row without exhaling in between. And then you do a forceful long exhale. So I'm going to show you how this goes, and then I'll explain what it does to us physiologically. It goes like this. So there, did you hear that, Mercedes? So there are two yeah. inhales and then an exhale. And are you so holding happens, at the end? So you've no, got the I two did. inhales? Yeah. I did. Depending on how you inhale, I could have also made the second inhale longer. Sometimes when I make the second inhale longer, it's like I'm so full I can't hold it. But if I if I didn't inhale super deeply for the second time, I will hold it a little bit just to give my body that moment for the gas exchange to occur. What I described earlier for the pranayama breath, and then I exhale. And I will say so. Normally, if we know that this multiple times together, which we're not going to do right now for time reasons. But it's a little bit of a practice too, because I just did it for the first time. My two inhales weren't as deep as they could have been. But if I do this five times in a row, and um, by the end I'm like doing two deep inhales, they're much deeper than my first two because I kind of like warmed up my breathing. If you if you want to say that, you know. And so the idea is that in our lungs, we have these mini um, sacs. They're called sacs where the gas exchange happens. They're like mini balloons. And what happens is when we don't fill them up all the way because we do a lot of shallow breathing, they kind of like start collapsing a little bit like this. And then every time we breathe, they open up a little bit and then they collapse a little bit and they open up. But it's really on the surface where the gas exchange happens. So it's really not very beneficial when they're kind of collapsed. There's not a lot of tension in there. So when we do two inhales, we're like really filling them up. We're popping them open like this. So 
this is why mm -hmm. it's very helpful. So as always, I always encourage people um, to try things out for themselves and see how it feels. Um, one thing I love about breathing, Mercedes, I told you that earlier is that with something as simple as breathing, you can change so much so quickly. So, which is why I love this. So this is the physiological side. I yeah. have two more that I want to share. I think are really helpful for um, climbers. And Mercedes is just, <laughs> oh, I love the static picture. I don't know what you guys can see, but the static picture is amazing because she has the most beautiful smile on her face. So I'm just going to continue hoping that the recording is continuing too. The last two or the third that I want to share is actually nasal breathing, which is also something that James Nestor talks a lot about. And he talks a lot about this um, for people in general. This is really helpful when people snore at night too. So it, there's a lot of general um, applications for nasal, nasal breathing. It's very, very healthy. I don't have time to go into this right now. But I encourage you to try it as much as you can during the day. However, for climbing specific, specifically, it can really help us with our endurance because it can really help us um, with an increased CO2 tolerance. And what that really means is that we're basically being able to use the oxygen in our body more efficiently when we do nasal breathing. And... So the way to practice it is pretty much to try to only do nasal breathing as much as you can. Start out with practicing it for your warm-ups as much as you can. Now, obviously, the rope climbers out there, the track climbers are going to benefit from this a lot more than the boulders, which are much shoulder climbs. But even for bouldering, um, it can really help because some boulders are longer. Some boulders are longer than 10 seconds long. So you're going to need some oxygen for that, too. And so nasal breathing is really interest, uh, really simple. You just breathe through your nose. There's many, many benefits to it. We get up to 20% more oxygen into our body through nasal breathing. There's also some, uh, it's also healthier in some ways, but again, I don't want to go into right now. And one thing that's really interesting, it's just an interesting fact that I want to mention is that actually breathing through different nostrils does different things to our body. So the right nostril is activating, which means it increases our blood pressure and it releases through the, do the opposite. It can relax us more. And, and the reason I wanna mention this, if people are just wanting to play around with it, the left, the right nostril breathing, um, is harder to do on climb, so you can't really do that, but actually it's something that our body does naturally. It kind of goes between, it closes one of the other nostril to kind of regulate our system. And this is actually one reason why it's also quite healthy to do in general, because we don't give our body that chance to regulate our bodily functions. If you want to, um, if you want to call it that way, if you breathe through our nose, uh, if you breathe through our mouth. So nasal breathing is just very um, healthy in general. We don't do it enough as a modern society. And um, so I recommend everybody try this, especially when climbing on ropes or when you train endurance, that's a really great time to focus on your nasal breathing. And next time you try to red point or next time you try your project even, try to breathe through your nose as long as you can before you get to really difficult sequences. And I think we're going to do a podcast episode about recovery on the wall too and resting on the wall. I'm going to just plug it right here. When you rest on the wall, you find a really good rest spot. Really try to get your breath down to a rate that allows you to do nasal breathing for quite some time before you move on. For that proper oxygen exchange and also just slowing down your heart rate. Anything else you want to add to that, Mercedes? The nasal breathing is also like for endurance, like building your endurance. You know, like when when we talk about building your endurance base, our measure of intensity is nasal breathing, you know, and uh, for all of those, I think, reasons that you also mentioned, but you like, you know that you're working at the right intensity to be able to last for as long as possible. And for sport climbing, that makes total sense. Like being able to be in the state that you can just climb for as long as you can. Um, and, and I do think like a lot of people don't maybe think about how long they can rest when they're 
sport climbing, like they always feel so rushed, you know? Um, and so coming back to that nasal breathing and just like what you said about try to nasal breathe for a while before you even think about continuing the climb. Absolutely. <clears throat> and I love what you said, because in a way it's like beneficial in so many ways. One, you know, if you nasal breathe, especially while training endurance, you're not climbing harder than you should. And you're getting all the benefits of nasal breathing. But there's even, it really regulates our heart rate too. And I think that's one of the things that I've always naturally done on sport routes. We, you and I talked a little bit about this. So people always tell me I have this natural endurance and I might have it. Who knows? It's complicated, but I think I've always just used my breath very efficiently. And I've always been able to control my heart rate really well. And nasal breathing really helps with that. They've actually, they've done studies where people who run marathons have tried to run the marathon with only with nasal breathing. So actually you can, so there's some philosophies out there that suggest you should always just nasal, like breathe nasally. I don't even know if that's a way of say, talking about it, but you should always use nasal breathing and have your body adapt um, physiological to the exercise, to the stimulus. And so people have run marathons and maintain the same heart rate through nasal breathing. So that's pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. So I'm a big fan. It sounds so simple, but that's what I love about breathing. It's cheap. You can do it. You can do it anywhere. You can do it. You can stop it. You know, no equipment, no commitment. Do whatever you want. So that's one of the things I love about it. And most people just feel better. Okay. The last one I want to share is very different, but so important. I mean, none of these are really new. Some of these are maybe not as popularized in climbing right now. Um, but the last one has definitely been used by many athletes, many people talk about it. So this is not new, excuse me, is how we can use our breath for holding or initiating tension. And this has, this is very simple. This is just a very forceful, audible exhale. And anybody who knows Adam, Adam Andra knows Adam Andra does it because he yells. So yelling is actually a form of an audible, forceful exhale. Now, some people don't like to yell, like I don't like to yell, but I'll tell you what I do. And when you practice this at home, I encourage you, this is what I'm doing right now. I'm going to try to show this to you. Um, I'm going to stand up and show you how I'm putting both of my hands onto my abdomen like this. Um, because, and it's better when you stand, but I want people to try this out so you can feel how much your core activates when you do a forceful, audible exhale. So I'm going to try this. I'm going to move back because I don't want to do this too loudly into the microphone. So um, it goes like this. You want to do this. You want to match the timing to a dead point or to a move where you have to hold tension. So you have to match the timing with this forceful out breath. Most often it's a dead point in that case. So, so let's say I try really hard and then I do this. <laughs> and when I just do I can feel how my whole core really tightens up. And I've even talked to an athlete about this recently because she was talking about how she had a hard time coordinating when to hold tension. And it's sometimes hard to coordinate four different limbs at the same time. So sometimes it's easier to try to coordinate an audible exhale, a forceful audible exhale, than it is to try to coordinate all of our limbs. So that means when you next time when you go for a dead point or a really hard move, you just try to do a little ha! and see how your body tenses up and how you might be able to hold that position and activate that tension through your core. It's definitely helped me a lot. And I know there's a lot of, you know, athletes who use that specifically as a technique like Adam Andra, as I said, who loves to yell for that reason. So yeah, and there's really great benefit to uh, this breath when you're lifting heavy as well. Mm. And so like, that's why like we are able to control our core in very intense situations such as like a dead point something mm -hmm. really hard in climbing or if you're lifting something super heavy and i know with um with lifting you do try to make a sound uh so it is a little different i think with climbing 
uh, you probably won't make this sound, uh, but with with lifting like a deadlift or a squat, um, you put the your tongue on the roof of your mouth and you make a noise so that you actually know that you're you're creating that tension and using your breath correctly uh, under heavy loads. Um, so I I love this that it works so well. And when clients start to implement just this breath in their lifting, they're automatically being able to lift heavier than they were before. And so I, I'm sure like for climbers who struggle with core tension or maybe believe that, oh, my core is weak, maybe, but maybe you should also try this breath. Like this breath might resolve a lot of the, the core tension issues. Yeah, I actually love that you brought that up. I think it's the same thing. You know, it's just the audible exhale that the lifters use. I mean, I know you said they put their tongue against the roof of the mouth, but I think as long as there's a sound to it, which just really makes the exhale more forceful mm -hmm. and which really activates, helps activate that tension. I don't know if there's something about um, putting the tongue against the roof of the mouth. I have not heard about that. But I think making making a sound, making any sound could be helpful. As I said, Adam Andre likes to yell. Like yelling is actually the most forceful way of exhaling. So if people want to yell, I know people who yell, please go ahead and yell. It's going to be really good. Most people feel self-conscious mm -hmm. um, making really big sounds. And so I always try, I, for myself, I just do this small sound, the <laughs> sound that most people can't even hear. Um, but it really helps me. But I will try the putting your tongue against the roof of your mouth. Mm -hmm. And then you have to hum, not hum, you have to, what's the sound that you have to make for lifting? It's like a T-S-S. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think it really is to control the exhale so that you can do it for longer, you know, because ah, like, okay, yeah. you know, depending on That's how heavy you're lifting, you it may take you at least a second or two to to get mm -hmm. through the hardest part of the lift. And I think that sound and that the, the mm -hmm. placement of the tongue just allows you to control that exhale a little bit more. Yeah, that's very cool. I'm going to have to try that. I mean, I do yeah. my, for my lifting yeah. too. <laughs> it works yeah. pretty well also, yeah. but I well, like practicing. So new things. We, you know, as a, as a tennis player, I, you know, I used to make a lot of sounds um, yeah. on the, on the court with every exhale because like when you hit the ball you have to time it with your exhale you know and so like you just get used to like hitting and making a sound like as you make that contact and yeah you are able to develop a lot more power at contact when you do coordinate like that um and yeah some players really take advantage of it um which i think is fabulous yeah yeah, it's definitely something that's used in, in many, many sports. Mm -hmm. And as you said, it's the coordination. And that's what it's so beautiful about being able to do it in climbing too. Because a lot of people think they need a stronger core when they actually need to learn how to use their core on the wall. And timing is so important. It's it's such a different, it's such a difficult way of orchestrating your whole body to activate the tension, you know, when you need it. So yeah, give it a try. Try all these different exercises if you want to. Um, as I said, it's really cheap. It's simple to do. And let us know. Yeah. Let so us we know have what the, you're learning here. We have the four. So we have pranayama, which is yeah. essentially like managing your stress or stress breathing. A relaxation breath, I guess. What do you want to call it? Pranayama. Yeah, so actually... <laughs> Now, to make it more pranayama, there's actually lots of different types of breathing that one can do, but this is one of them. Yeah, it's like a stress relief. Stress relief breathing. Mm -hmm. And you do this before and after a climbing session, ideally mm -hmm. for about one to two minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, then you have your physiological sigh, which mm -hmm. you could apply to your limit sessions before mm -hmm. you attempt something, yeah. before you like, especially like in bouldering, if you're about to come up to a climb you you do mm -hmm. this how many do you know how many times is optimal well that's a good question does it, I think, does it matter mm -hmm. to me I can just feel how I feel different 
So sometimes mm -hmm. I have to do it maybe five times and sometimes I only have to do it three times. And I actually do it just before I get on a climb. Like literally when I sit down in front of the climb, I chalk up and then I do my breath work. So sometimes just twice, sometimes three times, sometimes even just once if that's all I need just to get into the zone. And you can do it on ropes too, just before you start the crux and really try that. Uh, and just like with anything in climbing, you know, practice is important and that's true for breath work too. So it might take a few practice sessions to really dial it, you know, in what's going to be helpful for you. But yeah, the psychological side is really good for that because it's, it's also a type of stress release, but it's a little less calming than the pranayama yoga, yoga breath. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit more activating and bringing awareness and focus to your body. And then we have the nasal breathing for mm -hmm. essentially your rest positions in sport climbing, or even as you're resting between attempts, uh, trying to use more of that nasal breathing. And then in daily life, as often as you can, try to nasal breathe. Actually, I would even say try to nasal breathe on the climb as much as you can. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be really hard sequences where it's difficult to do. But I would just really love for people to try this out. You know, try a climb normally and then try a climb again. And really focus on that nasal breathing and see how different it is. Because it's also relaxing and it oxygenates your body so much more. And that means you'll be able to go for longer. And then we have the last breathing technique that will improve your core tension and even strength on the wall when you hold a, a hard move, which is your uh, holding and initiating tension breath. Well, these are going to yeah. be, um, we are putting these into our programming for Stronger Together so that people can remember to do this because that's the hardest part to remember to do this stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, we have these breathing techniques. Uh, so, you know, if you're interested in joining Stronger Together and getting uh, deeper in some into some of these techniques and getting better at your tactics in sport climbing and bouldering, uh, you know, you can use these breathing um, strategies. Thanks, Katya, that was awesome. Thank you. Thanks for letting me talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll see y'all next time. Bye-bye.